Terry. What? <laughs> look, wow, what? Look at this scripture okay. that I found. This is Isaiah 41, 10. We're talking about no more fear, yes. freedom from fear. Okay. It says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yay, I will help you. <laughs> Yay. Yay, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. But I like and verse 13. What is verse 13? Oh, I, look at that the one. the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help you. Praise God. No need to fear, Jesus is here. With so much happening in the world, you might wonder if it's even possible to live without anxiety. Learn how you can live in total peace with the Freedom From Fear Package, a mini book by George Pearson's called No Fear Here, and Freedom From Fear, an audio teaching by Kenneth Copeland. The Bible says that God's perfect love casts out fear. Faith will overcome fear every time. Learn to keep your heart and words aligned with what God says. When you get God's Word in your heart, you have peace instead of worry, hope instead of dread, and faith instead of fear. You can be so filled with God's peace, there is no room for sickness and lack. Understand that God loves you, provides for you, and protects you. Grow your faith and declare over your life, no fear here. Then live the rest of your days free from fear. Jesus defeated all fear and has given you the victory. Request the Freedom From Fear package, free from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, at kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. You've not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. This free offer is good for 60 days. Outside of the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. We're Pastor George and Terry Pearsons, and we're talking about freedom from fear. That's a good thing to be free from. It really is. Fear, fear George, yeah. is bondage. To be afraid. How, how many lives have been ruined because people were afraid? Uh, afraid to uh, do the very thing that God had called them to do. But fear stopped them. Fear from all kinds of entrepreneurial ideas. You wonder why maybe why you're not blessed. Maybe you've been afraid to step out in things that the Lord has called you to, but the devil's interrupting his plan by the force of fear. Yes, that's right. And I just really sense right now, we've got some people that are watching us. You've gotten some bad news. Whatever it is, whether it's a court case or a physical mm -hmm. situation, financial, um, and the temptation is for that fear to try to rise up on the inside of you and take over your thinking, take over your attitude. And as we've been talking about being free from fear, you just look to Jesus, you look to the Word of God, and He will show you the path, He'll show you the way, He'll give you the answers, He'll show you exactly and precisely what to do. There is hope in Him because He is good to us and he's good to us all the time. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over everyone who is watching, especially those that have received some kind of news, and I thank you that their hearts are becoming established in the word of God. They are not shaken, they are not moved. I thank you, Lord, that you are manifesting your goodness to them, and we refuse to fear. Say this after me, I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. News. News. Bow your knee. Bow your knee. To the name. To the name. Which is above every name. Which is above every name. I am free. I am free. From all fear. From all fear. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, the outlines that we are working with during this series are available to you. Go to kcm.org and you can print those out, you can use those, you can, pastors, you can distribute them in your churches if you're gonna, if you wanna have a series 
on freedom from fear. These gives, this gives you all of the scriptures, all of the thoughts that we've been talking about here. They're all available to you, and we want to make them available absolutely free to you. So today, Terry, we're talking about freedom from fear and the scripture, uh, Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord, he heard me, and delivered me from all my fear. That's it, all fear. All fear gone, totally. And what it takes is the renewing of our minds to be able to have our minds transformed so that we can see ourselves completely and totally without fear. You know, it's something that we have to make an effort towards because the world is squeezing, squeezing us all the time with fear, sometimes very overtly, horror shows, scary things, bad news. But there are other things that happen in life that come in the disguise of something else, cartoons or uh, humor, mm -hmm. humorous ideas, but they, they support the spirit of fear and they support your expectation of something to be dreaded, something to be afraid of. Um, what one guy thinks is funny is not so funny to another one. Mm -hmm. So you have to guard your own heart and you do it with the Word of God. And that's yep. why, again, we have these, I set this over here, yep. but we have these, this free product here. that We wanna give you this little book and this Freedom From Fear MP3 by Brother Copeland. <clears throat> Information is right there on your screen. Why are we promoting this? Because fear, fear not only affects you, it affects those around you. And as our television audience, as our partners, our friends, but as part of the body of Christ, it's time for the body of Christ to not be afraid, not afraid to stand up in the, in the public arena, not afraid to stand up in the political mm -hmm. arena, the social mm -hmm. media arena, the medical arena, education. We have to be strong in the Lord and the media and everybody else is going to tell you, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. They're gonna, they're gonna ruin you, they're gonna take this from you, <laughs> yeah. et cetera. Yeah. And that's why it affects all of us and for the church to rise up. Yeah. And that's our mission is to teach people who they are in Christ yep. and what's available to them through the work of, of Jesus. I can remember years ago, Terry, and you'll remember this too, that my mother was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, they lived in another part of the country and you and I flew there for the specific reason of being with her. And we, we loaded up on the teaching material and this actually was one of the series that we brought to her to listen to. And at a time like that, what you have to do is just completely uh, focus on the Word of God. And that's what we had her do. We had her listening to that Word, just flushing out that fear and getting her into a place of faith. What does it mean to, have, to be in a place of faith? How, how would you describe that? Well, when, when faith is present, it's notable because of the things that are absent. Now you can be in faith and have doubts in your head. You can be in faith and fear come at you. I told the story the other day about being in Guatemala mm -hmm. and we're being shot mm -hmm. at when well, my body's responding with adrenaline, but the presence of fear, real fear in my mind or in my spirit, it just wasn't there. Yeah. Praise yeah. God, yes. praise God for training. Thank you, Lord, that we are well trained in the word. I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. But the presence of faith removes fear uh, and then because we know that faith can also deal with the problem. You know, the, the problem itself is one thing. Fear of, of the, the problem, problem is exactly. something else. That's good. And the pressure that it delivers undermines mm -hmm. the working of your faith to deal with the problem. Yeah. So if people don't deal with the fear then they're trying to use their faith for healing or finances or restoration of some sort, but fear is undermining it, you don't deal with the fear, then the faith effort that you're making is diluted and yeah. weak uh, and quite often falls short because faith is rooted in the love of right. God, God's right. love for you, God's love to you and through you. So in this today, what we're talking about is taking authority over fear. We have authority 
over fear. And we're starting with Hebrews 2, verses 14 and 15. Jesus defeated the master fear. What is the master fear? The kingpin of fear is death. It's death. And so we read here in verses 14 and 15. Hebrews 2, right? Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Insomuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself, talking about Jesus, likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So that fear of death is, is the kingpin. When you go back to it's Genesis, the we read this a few days ago. Mm -hmm. You go back to Genesis and you see where they were in the Garden of Eden and uh, the first thing he starts talking about, well, you just even, you just look at the fruit and touch the fruit where well, you're going to die, you're going to die. Well, they were eternal beings. Yeah. They, they were not going to die. God didn't put death in them, but the Lord warned them, now don't do that because this will produce death. But instead, Satan separated her from what the word had said, what the word of the Lord was. And he said, well, did God really say that? You're not going to die. No, but then all of a sudden, this fear, fear of dying made way for an incorrect interpretation of what God had said. Hmm. And the next thing you know, the whole earth and mankind is plunged into the curse. Right, right. Now, fear. the Amplified Translation of verse 15, uh, and also that he might deliver and completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their lives, throughout the whole course of their lives. Terry, there are people who've been dealing with the spirit of fear for a very long time. You know, I like Dad's instructions and in teaching us on this, the master fear of death, why do we call it that? Because um, the fear of, a lot of, many times the fear of, of going hungry, you know, getting, not getting what I want yeah, in your yeah. body, what does it do? Overeats, you know, and brings on all kinds of disease. So um, the fear of failure, the fear of rejection, the fear of lack, the fear of pain, um, one fear right after the other, in all parts of life, but they all point back to the fear of death. That's right, that's right. Second Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That, you had a comment about that, Terry, that you, that you wrote in the notes, go ahead. So if God doesn't, if he doesn't give us fear, and that's not a tool he uses, then we shouldn't use it as a tool either. We, we shouldn't assume it to be a tool. Quit associating fear with anything of God. In, and anything that is fear is not God. Yeah. And if it's God, yeah. it's not fear. That tells you a, a lot right there. That, that's the Bible in a nutshell. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came to give you life. That's the dividing line of the Bible. If it's fear produced, and fear generated, it's not God. He That's doesn't right. give us the spirit right. of fear. Now, he will warn us. Yeah. And there is fear attached to those warnings. If you don't, why is there a warning? So that you can be on his side, so that you can allow him to be God to you. And he'll let you know it's not to produce fear in your life. Yeah. But if you do this, then trouble's coming. And I'm telling you that, why? So you won't do that. Yeah. That's why he t warns us about sin, okay? People think that go with God, then you're afraid you won't get to do what you wanna do. Yeah. But what you need to do is realize that if you go with God, it won't kill you. That's why we have to be so discerning about what we watch and what we're listening to. Yeah. There are people that love horror films. They just thrive on horror films. And what that's doing is that's building fear. You're literally feeding fear down into your spirit to where that will eventually affect you and that will come out. It will be seen. 
And I remember when I was a child, I, I don't know why my parents did this, uh, but they, they took us to a drive-in movie theater, my sister and me, to see the movie Psycho. It was that Alfred Hitchcock movie. Oh, it's you know, horrible. Like, <laughs> And my Don't sister, go look and, I, it up. My Don't sister go look and I were hiding behind the back seat, and my sister, older sister kept saying, go look and see what's happening now. And I'd look up, and I'd come back down, and I'd tell her, and it was, that's how much it affected us. We were hiding behind the back seat. Well, I know people that were more our parents' age that said, I saw that movie, and it was months before I could take a shower because mm -hmm. that so scared me. Yep. And I know that person also, yep. And she remained fearful yeah. of a lot of things the rest of her life. Yeah. There was another movie. Um, we used to go to movies on Saturday afternoon. We'd spend the day at the theater. I mean, that's how far I go back. But there were, there were the Vincent Price movies. Oh, yeah. Those, Those horror scared movies. Me. They scared me. <laughs> they really did. They were awful. Oh. The Thing. <clears throat> then there was one that I saw, The Man with the X-Ray Eyes. Ray Milland, bless his heart, he was having a hard time, couldn't get work, so he got into a horror film. But um, I remember I got back home that night and I, was, I dreamed about the man with the x-ray eyes. And the people around the man were going, because he could see through everything. And they were shouting at him going, pluck them out, pluck them out, pluck them out. And I'm laying in bed, Look hearing them, eyes. pluck them out, pluck them out. So that's what, that's what this <laughs> stuff does. So we have to be very- and Some of that, of course, looks real silly to you now. You think, uh, you know, oh, that's, you know, silly looking, but, but, but those kind of images will always speak to the generation that they, that they come out of. The devil yeah. always will escalate. Well, if you'll believe that one, I got another one for you. Yeah. And he will paint a picture. And it may not, you, you may not see that fear show up the same way, a fear of an intruder or something, but it'll show up fear, yeah. fear of a car wreck, fear of, fear of losing, fear of dying, fear of um, something to your children, something to your spouse, something to your parents, uh, your neighbors, your neighborhood. And what people don't realize too is that kind of fear unchecked becomes very serious when it's corporate. When you have whole neighborhoods and cities yeah. of people that though individually, but they, they are well developed in fear, it draws hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and mudslides. It just draws that to yeah. you. Yeah. And then the people of faith, and you know, those things start coming and they're standing in faith believing. Boy, yeah. you got a lot, lot going on. <clears throat> so we have to take authority over fear. Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. We'll read that in just a moment, but we have to adopt that zero tolerance policy regarding fear. Not going to have it, not going to receive it, not going to entertain it, not going to allow it into our lives. I say, no, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. That's the way you have to be, based in the Word of God. You just can't kind of do that just off the cuff, but to make a solid decision, I refuse to fear, and I take authority over that financial challenge. I take authority over that physical challenge. I take authority over that family challenge. I take authority over the fear that's connected to it, and you have to learn to recognize it. You have to learn to recognize the fear, but you also have to put the Word of God, ha ha ha, uh, you have to put the Word of God in there uh, in those times when you're not faced with fear or where you don't think you are. You, you've got to do that yeah, because yeah. situations can happen suddenly, yeah. very, very suddenly. Would this be a good place to tell Kelly's testimony or? Sure. Okay. So her daughter, Lindsay, who's now in her, uh, well into her 30s, um, when she was about 11 years old, it was uh, Christmas Day. And we got a phone call to, that they were taking Lindsay to the hospital because of very, very, very high fever. So we dropped everything and went down there with my sister and the doctors immediately, she, she was unconscious, she was delirious, it was terrible. And the doctors said, we're gonna do a, a spinal tap, and they did, and it was concluded right away that she had a very, very serious form of spinal meningitis. And there were some in Fort Worth that had already died, some young children that had already died due to that. And so they're telling us, this is one of the, this is very progressed, this is very serious, we're not sure that she'll make it through the night. 
and we don't really think she will. My dad was off in another state, and so uh, George and I, we pulled over to the side with <coughs> Kelly, my sister, and she looked at me, and she said, I refuse to fear. Mm -hmm. We were in the room when they had taken that, that spinal fluid. It looked awful. Yes. We were in the room when it was five, six adults, men, trying to hold her down. She was thrashing so violently. But I tell you, the faithfulness oh, of God mm -mm -mm. brought her not only out of that healed, but every symptom and sign of things that it looked like her body would be left with, she was completely restored. Yes. But the key was... Yeah. I refuse. refuse to fear. Yeah. And then we pressed in. We pressed in by faith. So while she was staying with Lindsay, I'm over under a blanket over my head in the lobby, praying in the spirit, confessing the word, and taking our stand. But we, we yeah. grabbed fear, yeah. refused fear yeah. together as yeah. a family. We refused <laughs> that fear. Yeah. And then we were able to hear the voice of the Lord. Yeah. Do this, say that. Yeah. Pray this. Took authority. We she took authority to. over it. And then I believe it was after that that we took communion with mm -hmm. Jerry, Jerry Savelle, Savelle, Carolyn Savelle. Yeah. While dad was in Kelly flight to get I to us. Kelly and I in the little chapel they had. And I tell you what, that whole thing lifted. It lifted. It just lifted. The pressure. And there was such a confidence. But the reason we can do that is Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not. Fear thou not. Why? I am with you. This is important. God is with you. Yeah, but George is not just the man. The I am is the with I am, you. That's right. It's the, I am. Well, I am. The I am, I am with of, you. of Israel is with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. That scripture right there is reason enough given to us to be able to take authority over whatever fear is trying to come into our lives. That is a command. Fear not is a command from God. So we have to take that command, stand on it, act on it, and realize that the great I am is with us so we're not dismayed. He is our God. He will help us. He will uphold us. And I believe I'm saying that. I'm saying that to people right now watching us from all over the world. Fear not. Fear not. Say okay. Yeah. Say okay. Say I receive that. I won't fear. I believe it. I won't fear. I believe it. So Terry, what I want to do is go to that last page. Yes, sir. And I want to go through this pretty quick because we're just about to wrap up here. But in these notes, and also in the materials that we're giving you, are scriptures. Those are scriptures that you can stand on to take authority over the devil where fear is concerned. I'm gonna read the first one, you read the second one. And this is just a taste of what it's like to take authority. It says in Psalm 3, 6, I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people who've set themselves against me round about. Terry? Psalm 23, <laughs> verse four. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Yes. God, God is with me. Psalm 27, one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27.3. Though an host should camp around against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, my confidence is in him. Think about who your confidence That's is right. in. That's right, my confidence is in him. Psalm 56, four. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? What we have to do is think on an eternity yeah, level. Yeah, because... We're trusting in God. What can people do? Think higher. Think, think eternal. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Psalm 118.6. 118. Mm -hmm. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? I refuse. I refuse. Psalm 112.7. I shall not be afraid of evil tidings. My heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. My heart is established. I shall not be afraid. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 12, 
32, the Amplified Classic, my heavenly father said, do not be seized with alarm, struck with fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Say, I receive it. I receive it. Philippians 1.28, I am not for a moment frightened or intimidated by anything by my opponents or adversaries. And finally, 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, a mind that's at peace, a mind that's at rest, a mind that is sure of who is Lord. Now, say this after me, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. According to these 10 scriptures. According to these 10 scriptures. I take authority. I take authority. Right now. Right now. Over fear. Over fear. 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 You bow your knee. Bow your knee. To the name. To the name. Which is above which every is name. above every name. And, and uh, I, I remind you, Satan. I remind you, Satan. Jesus destroyed the master fear. Jesus destroyed the master fear. The fear of death. The fear of death. I am free. I am free. I'm free from fear. I'm free from fear. It no longer haunts me. It does not haunt me. I'm delivered. I'm delivered. I have joy. I have joy. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Is my strength. That's my strength. I am delivered. I'm delivered. From fear. From fear. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Now, if you want someone to pray with you personally, you call our prayer line. It's on the screen right now. We have prayer ministers right here on property that are ready to pray with you, ready to stand with you, whatever is going on and they can give you scriptures. They can talk to you. They can pray with you. They can stand with you. But that's, that's the way you do it. And then you hold fast. You take your stand. You don't let go. I refuse to fear in the name of Jesus. That's right. And fear will present itself. You can be sure of it. But you take your stand and be quick to do it. Don't give it an inch. That's right. That's right. So take these things that we're talking about. Stand on these things and just rejoice today. Father, I thank you that I'm free. I'm free. Come on. Yes, thank amen. you, Lord. Praise God. I'm free from, free from fear. I'm free from fear. fear. And yep. as we go, remember this. God, God loves, loves you. you. We, we love, love you. you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory. Prepare for your future in life and in ministry at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Apply yourself practically to ministry through class electives designed to develop your gifts. Get equipped for your calling, enter into your mission field confidently, and teach others to do the same. Graduate as an available voice to carry the legacy of faith into your life and ministry. To find out more, go to kcbiblecollege.org. Apply today.